Hey guys, John Tucker here with a very important message for those using ProRes in Resolve. There were some issues I investigated. We came up with a solution. Well, I was given a solution and it worked, but let's wind it back to the beginning, see how we got here. But if you want to jump straight to the solution, look at the timestamps below. So I was out the other day shooting in the front garden with my GH6 and just mucking around getting a couple of shots. I did a little bit at 4K 120 and then a little bit in ProRes. And I just noticed that the ProRes was just looking different. It was a bit harder to color grade. It was just, a, there's a bit more contrast there and a bit more saturation. I thought, is that just because it's a higher quality? And so there's a richer contrast and saturation. It seemed a bit odd because it almost looked like there was too much. All right. So anyway, I didn't think too much about it. But then the other day, it was a nice sunset, went out in the front garden and I thought, Let's go try out some B-Raw. It's been a long time. I only really tested to see if it would work. And I thought, let's see how good B-Raw actually is. So I grabbed the GH6 and uh, hooked this honking big thing up to the top of it and really tried to push it and see what I could get out of it. And in doing so, shooting Q0 on this little bad boy, um, which is the highest quality B-Raw you can get, I wanted to see how much I could squeeze out of this thing. So I went for it and First of all, I was blown away. Really changed my mind about a lot of things, B-Raw. Anyway, just the sh over-sharpened image is just a bit softer, a bit more organic, absolutely lovely. But anyway, what I did notice after doing these very unscientific shots in what I wanted to be the worst case scenario, you know, just really flares everywhere, backlit, bright sun, shadows on the face. Um, had dynamic range boost on, but accidentally had it set to 4,000 instead of 2,000 ISO. Anyway, it's really hard to film yourself when you've got this big rig going on. Anyway, gave that a try with B-RAW and thought, let me compare that to ProRes. And then while I'm at it, let me compare that to the long ops uh, formats. And when I got it into Resolve, something really, well, not unexpected because I'd seen it before, but it just, showed me what I was thinking was correct and what I'd actually seen on Red Frame Tech, um, his video about B-RAW and the GH6. And at the time, um, I was skeptical because I thought that doesn't seem like it would be the case. But sure enough, I've found something very similar. So shout out to him and the work he's doing with the GH6. And so it was very strange. And then I thought, let me test that against the H.264 that I took as well. And to my surprise, the H.264 looked more similar to the B-RAW than the ProRes. And I thought, if it's just a quality difference, surely the long op wouldn't be closer to the, to the B-RAW. That doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Um, so it just really got me thinking. I thought I need to do something a little bit more scientific. So I haven't done it yet, but I'm about to go downstairs and just shoot a chart. I'm gonna shoot it in a whole bunch of codecs and just see, it, it definitely seems like there's a gamma shift, but it's really, really weird. Anyway, let's go check it out downstairs. Then we'll bring it into Resolve and see what's going on. All right, so I've just been downstairs and done the tests. We've got our Louis Theroux cup full of coffee. Mm, let's see what's going on. All right, so we've got everything in a timeline here. We've got the Blackmagic Raw. We've got the ProRes, we've got the Longop 420, Longop 422, and the Orlai 422 for good measure. Now, let's see what's going on here. Jump back to the Blackmagic Raw. Just by looking here between this and the ProRes, might be a bit hard on YouTube, but there's a definite difference, right? And let me just chuck in the clean feed here. All right, so this is directly out of the deck link. ProRes, B-Raw, all right? Now, just for comparison, let's go from B-Raw over to 420, and then to 422, and all I, and you can probably, except for when I bump the camera a little bit, you can probably barely notice, except for some of the colors. You can see some of the colors between B-Raw, especially that blue one. Um, let me jump back to this view. This blue one here, you can sort of see, and a few of the other colors, 
the purple below it are different. But all the long ops are essentially the same. And if we look down here on our waveform, this is where it gets really interesting. So you can see here, I didn't white balance the camera exactly right, but that's okay, because we're basically going to be looking at our blacks and our white here. Let's see what's going on, all right? So, if we go to our Black Magic Raw, okay, these are our levels. We jump across to the long gop. Essentially the same, the colors move around a little bit. All these long gops, essentially the same, and black to B-Raw, and then we jump into the ProRes. Just look at this waveform in the corner here. Expands out, our blacks get blacker, our whites get whiter. Now, that is a drastic change. And that is what I noticed and what I've been talking about. And we'll notice again, Blackmagic Raw and the other codecs here, not much of a contrast change, if anything at all. Now, if we jump into the vector scope, uh, this is B-Raw here, and I've actually made this two times larger, so you can see it a little bit. Um, so we've, we've uh, extended the vector scope here. But let's, if you can, have a look in this bottom right corner where we're landing with B-Raw, okay? Where we're landing with the Longop Codex, we're about the same amount of saturation, just the primaries change slightly. All of the Longops and the All Eye are exactly the same in terms of saturation. And then when we jump to ProRes, boom. Big increase in saturation, as you can see here. And if we compare it to the ProRes, uh, sorry, the Black Magic Raw. There we are. Especially look at this gr yellow here. All right, we're not even in the box when we're times two. Now we're jumping all the way into that box there. All right, that's a huge shift. And again, Black Magic to the Long Ops. There's a bit more of a shift. All right. Black Magic Raw is definitely less. But when we go to ProRes, it's just out of the park, all right? Out of the park and compared to the others here. So, I don't know. That's what I wanted to show you. Uh, it's being confirmed here. So, interesting to see. What does this mean? I don't know. We're going to follow this up. We're going to talk to a few people and find out what the hell is going on. And, well, folks, wouldn't you know it. Just as I was about to start putting this video together, the good people over at Panasonic GH5 slash... GH6 user group have come to the rescue. I put a post up yesterday wanting, you know, explaining this problem and trying to find a solution. Spent all this time making this video today and then some clever fellas have uh, let me know what the problem was. So Dennis Schmitz and Ali Hamad um, seem to have been very accurate in what they've done for the solution. So let me run you through that here so we can all be aware of how this comes up and how to fix it, because that's what this whole video was about anyway. Let's do it. Here we are back in Resolve, and as you can see here, we have ProRes with a data range fix. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it was a data range issue, and now it makes complete sense. Except, why is Resolve interpreting the data range of ProRes different to everything else? Who the hell knows? So, how do we fix this? Well, you can see we've got the two clips here, the original, and then a duplicate that I've made where we've applied the data range fixed. So, in the original, if we go to clip attributes, we can see that data levels are set to auto, and Resolve must be automatically selecting video levels, which is causing it to be interpreted incorrectly um, and making that change. So, in this new clip, and this is what you have to do to fix it, go to clip attributes, choose data range full and hit OK and then you'll see that it's going to clearly match much more closely in fact next to exactly like the long got footage and when we compare it to the Blackmagic Raw it's essentially the same except for those color changes let's have a look down here on the vector scope all right, those primary color shifts are still there, but 
there's not much of an increase in saturation and it's essentially in line with the rest of the internal codex. So there you have it folks, all fixed. Thanks to the guys in the Facebook group and hopefully this helps some other people who might run into this issue. And I'll see you next time.